Hello, welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to the phenomenon that was Miami Vice. This week, we're talking about Season 4, Episode 20, titled A Bullet for Crockett. Finally happened. High fives all around, people. Crockett finally got his. No? Er, no? No one, <laughs> no one agrees? How okay. dare you? How <laughs> dare you, sir? <laughs> At this table. <laughs> I could have sworn someone promised him this bullet. <laughs> I know. That it had a, like his name on it or something. If only there was an episode where they could look back at all the times where something like that could have happened. I mean, that would be great, but. Yeah, just. And then what all are the odds? Like he's done something with one of the members of ICE, except for Zito. Don't do anything with Zito. Have everyone else on the show, but don't do a flashback with Zito. <laughs> well, I mean, they did have a flashback with Zito. It just didn't. <laughs> <laughs> he just didn't do anything in the flashback. <laughs> just wasn't moving. <laughs> it originally premiered on April 15th, 1988. It is written by Dick Wolf. No surprises there. It is directed by Donald Gold, who is also the co-producer of 111 episodes of Miami Vice. This is the only episode he directed. So he was the schmo that got stuffed into the editing room that had to go find all these clips. Pretty much. <laughs> Uh, yeah. As we mentioned, or have hinted at, this is the clip show, the only clip show in Miami Vice's history. And for a clip show, just okay. Yeah, it was pretty good. I thought this was going to be have more of an impact at the end, but then he woke up. So I guess everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and I can think of no better episode for us to land on on episode 100. This is the 100th episode of Go With The Heat Pals. It was meant to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> for the hundredth for the hundredth episode, we give you the greatest clip show of a clip show. <laughs> <laughs> we have clip show inception yeah, happening that's here. Exactly what's going we on. are going to do a clip show of the clip show of us talking about the clips. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going to talk more about the clips. It's clips about clips and us conversing about the clips. But also think about this. It could have been in your own clip show that you do at the end of the season. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it's like a, I don't even know how many times over. <laughs> So, yes, we're going to have a lot of fun with this episode. We are so happy we made it to episode 100. Thank you to everyone who enjoys the show and everyone who enjoys Miami Vice. <laughs> and if you listen and you don't enjoy, thanks, too. No, I'm just <laughs> Thank you, too. Thank you. No, Keep sending kidding. your nickels. <laughs> John's almost got 20 cents. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we will take your nickels and throw them at John. Please mail them or support us on Patreon. If you support us on Patreon... Like a dollar, a dollar per month. That's all that we're asking for. You give us a dollar per month, I'll convert that into nickels and I will throw them at John when I see him. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to break down this one, even though it is a clip show. So we're going to do clips about the clips and we're going to have a lot of fun with this one. And we're just so happy we made it to episode 100 and we're staring down the beginning of season five and the final sprint to the end on Miami Vice. So speaking mm -hmm. of a sprint, Let's get to the opening in this episode when Crockett tries to sprint his way in front of a bullet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John, we got music from the best of the best, right? I mean, this is like the cream of the crop when it comes to music for Vice. Uh, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> a very unenthusiastic. Eh. <laughs> uh, no, you know, I will say they took a good crop of songs, but they were definitely pick specific songs or I should say they pick specific scenes to flash back that happen to have the song from that episode in it. I wasn't sure so, if that was a coincidence or if it was like planned that way or if they were like, yeah. oh shit, like we gotta put this music in. I think it was them just being lazy, honestly. <laughs> um, because <laughs> at, they could have got other music and put it toward clips of, you know, stuff going on. But instead they were just like we already put a song to a scene in this episode. Let's just cut out that scene. <laughs> Let's get into it. Even though we've already talked about all of this music in the, their respective episodes. Let's go through it again. Starting with the very first song of the series. The most iconic song of the series. In the Air Tonight by Phil Collins. Who finds his way. Who found his way into as the show as a guest star into like six different episodes music into like another dozen episodes other people's music bios somehow he slipped in there <laughs> the many 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 times we've talked about Bill Collins 
I'm sure this will be some random clip of me telling you how great his collection of of Alamo stuff is, or how he's down to just three hairs, three hairs, three hairs. Flashback music! Fix this in the record to make up for this was to have the drummer play like a marching band style, okay? <laughs> Bill Collins has said that this marching band style is something that influenced the way he played drums in several tracks in the mid-80s. I don't know if I believe it, but damn it, Phil, get out of my music! Come on, man! Give me a music segment where you're not involved! Flashback music! Damn it, Phil Collins, when are you get out of my music? Like, we are almost done it with the show and you're still popping up and I'm probably going to have to t- talk about you again at the end of season four. So I'm sure whatever you heard was fantastic and um, a fantastic job. I'm positive. I'm sure it was hilarious. Can't you hear me laughing in the background? All right. So our next song is Don't Dream It's Over by Crowded House, which shows up in Rock in a Hard Place. Uh, it's from the end of the episode is where the flashback comes from if you remember they were an alien based new zealand rock band so and if you don't remember here's a little clip for you clip for you clip for you flashback music well i want to start out with the song i was seeing moment moment ago don't dream <laughs> it's over by crowded house crowded house is an aussie new zealand band neil finn vocalist and guitarist is a new Ze- new zealander whereas nick seymour and paul hester on bass and drums were Aussies. They were formed in Melbourne, Australia in 1985 and actually saw quite a bit of international success off of their first few albums and then things kind of trail off from there. The band saw most of their success, their first self-titled debut album, uh, which actually reached number 12 on US album charts in 1987 and provided top 10 hits, uh, Something So Strong and this song. Most of their success later in their career, though, was in Australia and New Zealand. Their fourth albums actually saw success in UK, Europe, and even South Africa. Finn and Hester were former members of a New Zealand band called Split Ends that was actually founded by Finn's older brother, Tim Finn. They would form Crowded House. The funny thing about them being in Tim Finn's previous band was at somewhere around their third album, the band had taken a break after a Canadian leg of their Temple of the Low Men tour. Finn and his brother Tim actually co-wrote an album called Finn. And then Neil would start working the follow-up third album with Hester and Seymour, but what they would give to the record company would be rejected. So Mm. Neil asked Tim, hey man, can I use some of the songs that we recorded on for Finn? His brother Tim was like, oh, you know, jokingly said yes, but only if he becomes a, a member of the band. <laughs> so in 1990, he officially joined the band as they used multiple songs off of their record <laughs> Finn for their third album. <laughs> it actually leave uh, about a year or two later. They would break up in 96. Tim and Neil Finn would go on to do solo work, whereas the drummer, Paul Hester, would actually work with children's entertainers, the Wiggles. He would play <laughs> Paul the Cook. Oh, I know who Paul the Cook is. <laughs> In my the, years of watching the, drummer the Wiggles. From House. <laughs> <laughs> would also have his own ABC uh, show in Australia called Hesse's Shed. Uh, I don't want to uncomfortable at all. <laughs> that I have not seen. <laughs> I don't know what that is. So, it. On Hesse's Shed in 1997, it would be the last actual time that Finn, Seymour, and Hester performed together on a stage. They would perform together to promote Neil Finn's solo record that was releasing the following year. Unfortunately, in 2005, Hester died by suicide. Oh, wow. After he died in 2006, the band would reform with Matt Sherrod over drumming and they would actually release two uh two more albums and both would reach number one on aussie charts in 2010 the band would will have uh, had officially sold over 10 million records flashback music <laughs> john oh man i just you know i learned so much from your music segments about australian music 
that ranks up there with my love of jazz. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So our next song in the episode is Be My Enemy by the Water Boys, who are a Scottish folk rock band. We've actually seen a number of these Scottish folk bands before, but they were featured in the episode Lend Me an Ear, and it was for the flashback of Crockett and Tubbs chasing Dykstra on the boat. Chasing Dykstra on the boat. So here is me talking about Scottish folk band. Scottish folk band. Scottish, Scottish folk, folk band. band. Flashback music. We get to our third song called Be My Enemy by the Water Boy. The Water Boys are an Irish, Scottish folk rock band formed in Edinburgh in 1983 by Scottish musician Mike Scott. Scott released a number of uh, solo recordings in late 81 to early 82. Those solo recordings would actually lead to him forming the short-lived and the Red and the Black with future members of the Water Boys. So in 83, the label, who at the time was thinking they were getting a solo record, would actually get the first debut album of the Water Boys, formerly the Red and the Black. They would take the name of the band from a Lou Reed song called The Kids off the album Berlin. They would add keyboardist Carl Wallinger. Their early music, their first three albums, would be known as their big music stage. They would tour supporting bands like The Pretenders and U2. So in 85, Winston would leave to join the band China Crisis. The trio would add Wickham's on violin after hearing a demo he did with Sinead O'Connor. Kind of important because that would be as they released their third album, which sold better than the earlier two, but promotion efforts would be stalled when they would refuse to appear on the show Top of Pops because they didn't want to have to lip sync their song. So toward the end of this tour for that third album, Carl Wallinger would leave to start his own band called World Party. That would lead to the more reggae phase, uh, or what they call the Gaggle Taggle Band era. <laughs> of the Water Boys would begin with Rickham moving to Dublin and he would get super into traditional folk music and so their next few albums would be mixed among critics and it would eventually start the disillusion of the band. So going into the early 90s they would break up with Scott trying to go solo until the Scott would resurrect the band, but name only, because it would be him with a bunch of new members, occasionally releasing and touring all the way up until, two, I mean, even in 2015, he released a new album called Mo Modern Blues. Waterboys still out there, still floating around, but just not the original members. Flashback music. Ah, that was fantastic. <laughs> I love those Scottish. <laughs> Amazing. I made a good point in that. Did you hear what I said at the beginning? <laughs> <laughs> All good points, John. All good points. All right. So moving on, we have Di <laughs> <laughs> We have Diamond Field. <laughs> we have Diamond Field by Pat Benatar. This is from the episode Dutch Oven from the flashback where Trudy kills the dealer. My but favorite Pat Benatar episode also show my favorite episode. Yes, name. I love I love the Dutch oven. So uh, and <laughs> probably should have said that. <laughs> I might regret that. <laughs> this episode's going horribly. <laughs> so this is Pat Benatar, and we didn't just see her in the episode Dutch Oven. We also saw her in the episode Milk Run with Hit Me With Your Best Shot. Personally, I think it's a better song, but here's me talking about Diamond Field. Diamond Field. Diamond Field. Flashback music. So, moving on, the next song we have is Diamond Field by Pat Benatar. This is during the opening car chase scene. Pat Benatar, man, she is really just the pinnacle of an American success story. I, I will just be first to say that. Her her actual Christian name, I, I'm not even going to try and pronounce um, <laughs> that. Her last name is some crazy Polish last name. Her hits include Hit Me With Your Best Shot and Love Is A Battlefield. She's a four-time Grammy winner. But what I mean by she's an American success story is, uh, so she dropped out of Stony Brook College after her first year at, at the age of 19 to marry her husband, Dennis Benatar. Thankfully, she took his last name. Yeah, I didn't realize that was a married name. I 
speaker, that was a stage name. Yeah. Like, her actual last name has like 32 vowels in it. <laughs> her husband, Dennis, was actually an Army draftee and Specialist E-4 stationed at Fort Lee, Virginia for three years. And while he was stationed at Fort Lee, Virginia, Pat worked as a bank teller. So so she would work as a bank teller and eventually she would quit because she would, she wanted to take her singing and make it a full-time job. So she got a job as a singing waitress at a restaurant called the Roaring Twenties. She worked there and worked her way onto a never-aired PBS special before getting in to start playing several clubs and eventually got her big break as a rock star. So she really worked mm. her way all the way up, you know, from singing waitress to failed PBA, PBS specials all the way to four-time Grammy Award winner. Flashback music. I still prefer Hit You With Your Best Shot. I prefer Dutch Oven over Milk Run, so... Um... <laughs> Fire away, John. <laughs> <laughs> So, got to show support for my girl, Trudy. <laughs> Our fifth song in the episode is There's a River by Steve Winwood. If you might remember him, he was in the Spencer Davis group. He was in Blind Fate with Eric Clapton and in the band Traffic. He, this up pops up in the episode Down for the Count Part 1. You know, where we find Dito dead with a needle in his <laughs> arm. Harsh, uh, harsh. But, <laughs> well, he was a junkie. We, we have to recognize he was a junkie. They, they never proved otherwise. Uh, Steve Winwood also popped up in other episodes, Trust Fund Pirates and by Hooker by Crook. So here's me giving you the lowdown on Steve Winwood. Steve Winwood. Steve Winwood. Flashback music. Steve Winwood, man. I mean, that guy, he's... He's a real he, man. He's, he's a musician. <laughs> He, he makes things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he makes music. And he reminds me of that guy, you know. <laughs> Our last song of the episode is, of course, Smuggler's Blues from the episode of the same name in which Glenn Fry basically had a crazy dream that he wrote a song for that became an episode of Vice. <laughs> no other reason. And Glenn Fry was in the Eagles and he was partying with Don Johnson. And somehow Phil Collins was involved, I'm sure. <laughs> um, and, you know, they, may, maybe they all went to a David Bowie concert together. <laughs> then we've got Smuggler's Blues. So in the flashback, Jimmy, Tubbs, and Crockett leave Columbia, uh, leave the Columbian airport. Leave the Columbian airport because, you know, once again, airplanes greater than boats. Greater than boats. Greater, greater than, than boats. Than boats. Flashback music. There are two songs in this episode. One being, you guessed it, Smuggler's Blues by Glenn Fry. What? And so Smuggler's Blues was on uh is on the album The Alt Nighter, which was released in 1984 by Glenn Fry. And this is a few years after the Eagles officially broke up and disbanded, and everyone kind of started their own solo careers. So this song or uh, and this album is basically the second solo album from Glenn Fry and this is his hi, him trying to be pick up popularity as a solo artist and the song was so awesome that it inspired Miami Vice to make an episode that's what's crazy here is that it wasn't that they had heard the song and they were forced into a, a contract of like Glenn Fry is doing a solo career we got to do an episode where, where we work in Glenn Fry and it wasn't just a regular episode that they actually and then just put Glenn Fry as a character and actually took the song and then turned the song into an episode. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's the thing is they liked the writers liked the song so much it inspired them to write the episode and then they thought it would be fun to have him as a guest star too in the episode. So basically uh the song Smuggler's Blues inspired this all of this bad, bad TV. But it did lead to a semi-successful career for Glenn Fry, a solo career for Glenn Fry. And then eventually he would tour later in life with, with the Eagles. I just assumed that this was like true 80s fashion where 
like in movies where you'd see the recap at the end, they would have hired someone to do a song about what happened. I assume that they had this episode and then they decided to have Glenn Fry, like he was now like doing solo projects, trying some new stuff. Maybe he wanted to try acting. And so they thought, oh, bonus, we have a like a guest star who's a musician. And then he wrote the song like for for the episode. And that would make more sense. Like right. he watched the episode like... Right. Uh, Mad Max Thunderdome. Oh, like, and Tina Turner sing, made that song for the movie after watching the movie. Basically, so it, 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 it's even deeper than that. So it wasn't just hearing the song. What really inspired them is the music video for the song. If you watch the music video for the song, it is basically what they were trying to go for in this episode in the music video. The music video being made for they made this episode. So they're basically taking hit Glenn Fry's music video and going, we could turn that into a Miami <laughs> Vice episode <laughs> fairly easily. Flashback music. Good old outlaw country. I'll never get tired of Smuggler's <laughs> Blues. Jimbo, you know the best people are named Jimbo. Just saying. Oh, yeah. they're, they're, they're the best. Jimbo's a guy who come help you start your car and have a marble red for you. <laughs> So I also, before we end our music, I do want to point out, playing along at home or counting along at home, you'll notice that not every flashback had its own music. But don't worry, Vice thought of this because Jan Hammer, his music were played with five of the other flashbacks. So almost every flashback had music accompanying with it. <laughs> and Hammer music that he chose, Miami Vice theme. Back, heaven, cool running, and shadow in the dark. So you might also be n- noticing Jan Hammer often names his music same as the episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Jan Hammer songs have titles. That's just called like scene twenty four seven B. No, we're a real. He's a real musician. What are you saying about Jan Hammer? He can name things too. <laughs> so there you have it. Our music. So and again, full of. Fantastic jokes from yours truly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's finish off this clip section of clips and end this thing with less clips. Let's go give our final thoughts on this episode. <laughs> clips of our final thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> And that's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Go With The Heat. We would love to hear from you. Email us, goWithTheHeat at gmail.com. Check out that website, goWithTheHeat.com. You can find all the ways to contact us. We had a ton of fun putting this together, doing this show. This was It was a clip show. We knew that this was not going to be a serious episode, so we took every opportunity to have a lot of fun with this episode. We hope you enjoyed this one. If you enjoyed it, email us, go with the heat at gmail.com. Let us know. Also, if you enjoyed it, go to your podcast or platform of choice and give us a review. Give us five stars. Go ahead. Just give us five stars. No one will even know that I told you to do it. There's no evidence on the internet. No one will be able to find this. But don't write a review. No one ever reads the reviews. Instead, write what Zito would remember if he was still on the show. Go in there, write down the best Zito Crockett moment. We want to see what your favorite Crockett and Zito moments are. Also on that website are other ways that you can support us. Like we said, support number one, email us, support number two, review the show, support number three. Check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash go with the heat and let us see your support. We have a ton of ideas for where we want to take this show after Miami Vice. And you know what? If you were willing to buy us a beer, if you ran into us, at a bar, and you say, you know what, I really enjoy the show, I'd be willing to buy you a beer. That's about $5 each, that's $15. If you want to buy us a beer, you can support us for less than that by paying a dollar a month to Patreon and showing your support on Patreon. That's only $12 a year. Dominic's here to help you save money. If you would buy us a beer, that'd be $15 plus tip on Patreon. It's only $12. So if you think we're cool enough, you love the show enough that you'd want to buy us a beer if you ran into us out on the street or at a bar, Go check out that Patreon, patreon.com slash go with the heat. That's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see y'all next time. This is not a clip or is it? <laughs> I don't know. It's a clip. <laughs>